Are you one of those people that puts something in the microwave and then just sits there and watches? Oh, like I that? look, yes. You're going to yeah. fry your brain. I know, no, <laughs> I try not to do that. We love making pizza at home, but it can be hard to get good results. Restaurants often have special ovens that can reach upwards of a thousand degrees and are able to produce super crisp crusts. Indoor pizza ovens intrigued us because they promise to reach higher temperatures than your regular oven without the long wait. To see if these things actually work, we tested six models, rating them on ease of use and pizza quality. Here are the highlights from our testing. All right, we've got the Breville Pizza Yolo here. We've been preheating it for about 20 minutes. Yep. We're working on the thin and crispy setting. Yeah, I like this that it has um, all the settings like 350, frozen, pan, New York, thin and crispy, wood fired, uh, and 750, 750 degrees, which is higher than your home oven can reach. It also has this really cool little feature that this is a magnet. It gives you more manual settings for these same dials. So this is the deck temperature and the top temp. So Deck is like the pizza stone. Yeah, exactly. When you open it, the deck is actually attached to the door. Oh, well done. Woohoo. Oh my god, yum. Wow. It's supposed to go one more minute to get a little more browning, but I look at I feel like that. this needs more browning, but not the center. Yeah, that's amazing. Should we go manual? Put we need this our, on. our slap. Put our manual thing gummy. Okay. Uh, so crust only. Crust only. So we just adjusted it so the top eating el heating element, instead of cooking across the whole top, is just doing the crust because we saw our cheese was getting a little brown. So that took us, what, two seconds to make that adjustment? That was fun. This one is from Betty Crocker, which is not really a top name in pizza, but we'll see. <laughs> it operates kind of like a waffle iron. There's a top and a bottom, and there's no controls. Not even a power button. It's either plugged in or it's not plugged in. There's kind of a bowl you got to throw it in. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting. Well, you really got to aim, don't you? Yeah, luckily this peel lets you do that, but I didn't quite hit it. Because because of that lip, you can't really place your pizza. You kind of have to like launch it and hope, and then to get it out, we're going to have to go in and kind of excavate it Ooh, to get it out. I of that. This is the El Forno Magnifico. <laughs> <laughs> you got to say it that way every time. When it, the timer goes off, it t shuts off completely. So mm -hmm. we don't love that about it. There's temperature settings zero through three. And let it rip, we're all the way on three. Yeah, you don't have as much control. It's doing what it's gonna do and you're stuck with it. All right, there's certainly no backstop here. There we go. So I love that flat, like it doesn't have a rim there. You were able to mm -hmm. get right in there at a horizontal angle. There's little windows here. You can see the edge of the crust. Oh yeah, These that's really nice. Windows. I think it's supposed to be a vent, but actually it works like a window. You can see whether the crust is uh, puffing up, if it's turning brown. This is a little bit of a different model. You'll notice we took off the big wooden cover that was on this. There's a stove top underneath. This one is not electric. It sits on your burner. So our burner is mm -hmm. ripping hot right here. It's radiating heat. It is I'm quite like... hot over here. This is the door. You want to keep the door closed as much as possible to keep that heat in there. So I'm going to take it out and we're going to slide this one in. There's a pizza stone in there. It's made out of the same material as our favorite baking stone. It's called corduroyite, and it's a like ceramic. I noticed that you had to use an extra small pizza peel. This doorway is a little bit constricted. Mm -hmm. Removing the pizzas, rotating the pizzas, especially if you have toppings on there, not as easy in other models. How are we Allegedly, doing? Allegedly, we're at like 650 degrees. In testing, we learned it takes so long to cool down, so mm -hmm. this is not a summertime thing. We liked indoor pizza ovens with clearly labeled dials and models that didn't give us a hard time inserting or removing the pizzas. Time for our favorite round, inspecting pizza quality. Wow, look at that, nice. Sizzle, woo. Look at the evenness here. It's really, you know, it's really nice and looks professional. Beautiful. All right, so we're gonna eat the pizza from our Breville Pizzaiolo and- Tough day. Yeah, hard day at the office. So this is a thin crust pizza, similar to what we make in our home oven. This is just a little crispier, a little airier. Mm -hmm. Like it's like an elevated version of a home pizza. Wow, bubbling, hot. A little uneven, but nice browning. Nice puffy crust. Okay, uh, oh. it's got like a tattoo. It's, it's, it's been branded. branded. <laughs> um, the sign of the U. The yeah. problem here, and we saw this in testing, this is not the first time. This only has one and three quarters of an inch of clearance between mm -hmm. the heating element and the stone. So even if you're making a thin crust pizza like we are, the top, this heating element, sears into the top of it as the dough rises. 
And it smells like an ashtray. It's not a good smell. Like eating this, of course that would taste burn. We're talking like if you eat something over here, it tastes burn. Because mm -hmm. if you think about it, this whole thing was marinating in that searing smoke the whole time. It's so sad because it's so gorgeous otherwise. Right. I mean, that's a real pizza stone in there. It should be great. They should just have made a little more clearance. So with this one, the heating element is only this wedge area right here. So there is a great amount of time where the pizza is spent just in open air. This and if you don't have it around. closed around there, it's not going to get the ambient temperature up very high. Looks like Watch it belongs at a gas station with like some hot dogs on top. So we're going to give it 20 minutes. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so it's been 20 minutes, twice as long as you would in a home oven. It's yes. getting a little dark on top, so we're gonna take this off. It's a pizza, I guess. It's very dried out. See, the sauce looks like tomato paste. It's not, it's not cooked this through. This is super sad, I'm sorry. Let's see what our pizza craft, Pizzeria Pronto has done. Not it's bad. Good. A little uneven, even though we rotated it. On par with the home oven pizzas we made. Is it better than your home oven? No. Do you need to buy this in addition to your home oven? I don't think so. So this is the pizza stone that we recommended after we did a full testing. It's called the Old Stone Oven Pizza Stone. And this thing really works if you preheat it in the oven for a full hour. With your home oven, this can get up to about 500 degrees. Really hot, really good home pizza. In this round, we were looking for machines that made pizzas with evenly brown, crisp, crusts, and melty hot toppings. Only one oven rose to the top in this round. There are a few other contenders, but none of them really match the quality of our baking stone. If you want great pizzeria quality pizza at home and prices no object, get our winner, the Breville Pizziolo. But we also had really good results with our winning baking stone from Old Stone Oven. It doesn't hit those temps like 750 to make Neapolitan pizza like the Breville Pizziolo, but it'll get you a heck of a lot of other things. And it costs a fraction of the price. For more info on our winner, the other ovens we tested, and our baking stone, check out the links below. Grab yourself a slice, post your questions in the comments, and make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode.